Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Uh, this is a new format on uh, the channel that I'm trying. Uh, I don't have a name for this show per se, but it's gonna be a casual software discussion. And the motivation of this content is, is as follows. Most of the time, I get very loaded questions on the on my YouTube channel, and they are great questions, and I, I try to answer them in the comments, but I feel like they are lost. There's a lot of value on these uh, questions. So, And what I started to do is answer them on, on YouTube stories, but YouTube stories suck because they give you only 15 seconds. You cannot even finish a thought in 15 seconds, for God's sake. What can you do in 15 seconds? At least make it a minute, guys. Yeah, so I can't do anything on YouTube stories. I'm getting a lot of subs from YouTube stories, which is amazing. But unless they make it at least a minute, that will be valuable. Until that happens, I'm going to try this show. Let me know if this this is good or not, right? This is just a very casual, you know. Yeah, I'm not wearing a tux or anything like that. But it's going to be this discussion about this. And one of the topics that I got today as a Q&A, a question was on my YouTube channel. I cannot get my question because it's on my phone. <laughs> Let me get it on my, on my laptop. Let us, wait a second. Uh, should have thought about that, huh? Before I did this thing. All right. It's okay. It's actually not, not bad because I, I, I'll just go through my laptop here. And the reason I'm, I'm filming with my phone because I don't have a camera yet. Yes, guys, make fun of me. <laughs> All right, where was that, that cool question? All right, got a question, guys. So uh, I'm going to put it on the screen, actually. So the question is, question about consistent hashing for ya. All right, from Sam Silver. Imagine that I have a sharded database across three servers, S1, S2, and S3. And for a given customer ID, if that's my sharding partition key, I'm reading and writing to the database on S2. That makes sense, right? Because it's consistently hashing, and it will go to the S2, right? Imagine that you're doing a mod modulus operation, and all the writes and reads goes to S2 because that key is on S2. I'm getting a lot of traffic on my sweet side, and I decided that I need to add an additional server, S4. But guess what? Now, S4, all the new customers, all the old customers that used to be hitting S2 is now hitting S4. But, but how is this possible? Because my data is in S2, right? So that's a great question, right? 3 a.m. watching these videos on Quarantine Friday. Guys, stay safe. And yeah, yeah, I can't, can't stress this enough. Uh, keep learning. Keep keep yourself busy, right? I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm learning every day. I mean, sometimes it gets boring. I know, I understand. You don't want to always learn. So you need to something to kind of relief. Uh, so I play PlayStation. I play old games on PlayStation. I'm, I'm, I'm a boomer like that. I'm still playing Bloodborne and Dark Souls over and over and over again. I just love those games. But let's get to that question. So it's a wonderful question. So S1 and S2 and S3 are, are shards on your server, and you're using consistent hashing. So uh, customer number, uh, let's make made it very simple. So if you're doing a select statement where the key is, I don't know, 1, that will go to server one, and uh, ser key two will go to server two, and key three will go to server three, and four will go to one, right? And one of the simplest way to do consistent hash is to do a module. This is very, very naive, obviously, but there are al algor many algorithms. But you can see that modulus operations just take the remainder, and that remainder is your server. Okay, so uh, three modulo, Z, uh, mo modulo three gives you zero, and that's server zero. And four modulo three gives you one, so that's server one, and so on, right? So you can do that. However, the moment you add a server, the whole thing is messed up, because now you, do, you need to do modulo four, and things that used to be like three is now what? Is, is server three, not zero, right? So everything is messed up. So... Adding a server 
to your shirt is not a simple thing, guys. It's not just, hey, let me add a server to my shirt, hash ring. No, it's an expensive operation. And Cassandra, Cassandra is one of those databases that does that very elegantly. Okay, because when you add a new server to your ring, you better know what you're doing, son. Because I touched my face. God damn it. Okay. All right, so if, you, if you're adding a new server, you need to calculate the existing, the whole algorithm have to redistribute all the keys accordingly. Because now the existing data that is, happens to be S2 could need to be an S4 and so on. So the algorithm like Modulo is the worst in this situation because every single server need to start shuffling data left and right because of this reason. So it's like, oh, oh, I don't, I don't own this data anymore. It is, it's owned by S4. So S4 will start kind of pulling data from all servers. That could be bad and good at the same time. Could be bad because you're kind of all the servers are contributing on this uh, network traffic because S4, the new server that just joins the ring, need to get data from S3 and needs to get data from S4 and needs to get data from uh, S2 and S1 and S0, right? Because it needs to get data from all of this stuff and capture it in itself. Now, the good thing about this is it's better than actually getting the all the data from one node. And that used to be the algorithm in, in Cassandra, in Apache Cassandra, where when you're adding a node, it, it can kind of sits between two nodes and it will start pulling data from the, the neighbor node, N minus one and N plus one. And, and you're only throttling these two nodes, right? So these new nodes are busy being a database, right? They are very they're doing their own thing and throttling their network, their traffic and their CPU to transfer, I don't know, seven, uh, seven terabyte, <laughs> eight, uh, eight gigabytes of data to you is kind of an expensive operation. So splitting the load between all servers is kind of good, but you also need to know how much uh, thrashing and, and disturbance this does to your rank, right? And that's why adding a new server to the ring is not a it's not something you take slightly. It's it's a it's a very expensive operation and it takes really really a lot of work, right? And I still need to go and read the Dynamo paper by Amazon. That's one thing that Amazon actually did good for the community, Amazon uh, the open source community. They they contributed with the Dynamo paper, which is does all the all the consistent hashing and, and, and distributing. That's where Apache Cassandra came born and, and other CockroachDB and all the other databases were born as a result of inspired by DynamoDB. I don't know if other database, uh, Amazon contributed by, by other th stuff as well. That's one thing I know about, right? Like kind of, they're kind of, uh, yeah. Coffee break. So yeah, I still need to think really about this algorithm of consistent hashing and how, and, and I think you can read, write papers just to minimize these, uh, the thrashing that happens when you add a new node to your shard because, yeah, some people don't like consistent hashing because of this, right? Because this will affect you as a result. Some people, what you they used to do is they, they just use an incremental way of sharding, right? And that's just the easiest way, yeah. And uh, it's not really the best in terms of uh, load balancing those requests, but it's a thing. So here's here's one way to do it. Customers from one to 10,000 always goes to the server. Customers from 10,001 to 20,000 goes to the server. Customer from 20,001 to 30,000 goes to the server. And that's it, right? So if you, you're always 
going to be incremental, right? So if you add a new server, you'll make sure that only new stuff goes to that. Adding a new server in this case is very, very cheap. You can scale like that. Just add a new shard and just magically, automatically, your code will adjust because it will just, hey, oh, this is 40,001. That hits just the new server. That's easier than consistent hashing, but it doesn't have as good as a load balancing because let's assume, uh, yeah, customers between 10, 1 and 10,000 are very popular for some reason. I don't know, right? And they are getting more requests. These keys are getting a lot of requests. So this server will actually die, right? Because of uh, all these, these requests that's coming. I mean, obviously, guys, 10,000 is nothing. <laughs> I'm talking about if one scale that to the hundred thousand and twenty hundred two hundred thousand and and so on, right? But yeah, these are just uh, pros and cons of consistent hashing. And I'm I'm sorry, guys, if this was all over the place, but I just want to try this new format of a Q and A. Let me know if you like it. What do you? Let me know what you don't like about it. And uh, yeah. Um, I made sure that the visual is not as good as the audio. The audio should be good because I got this uh, nifty thing from Apple that converts the lightning into a USB so I can make this puppy works. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to publish this just, just right now. Uh, today is Saturday. I'm just publishing it today. And I've been publishing video every single day this week, right? And uh, I don't know what is it about, but I feel really it's just staying at home and just I need to be creative. And, and this is one of my creative effort and just talk about technology and, and create content, right? It's it's whether you like it or not, it's, it's art, right? It's creative endeavor. And if I sit down and do nothing, man, I feel depressed. <laughs> That's why I need to do something, right? And uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, this is one of the things I, I'd like to do. I just even if the quality is not, I mean, what who who knows what quality is these days, right? I was like, you guys decide what quality is, not not eight K content video, right? It's just this is now. I don't know. It's gonna be ten eighty or four K, whatever, right? But I'm, I'm I'm recording from my window. There's no lights. I said in my background. That's it. I'm almost in my pajamas for god's sake right it's just what is the quality it's just the content and, and try to be casual what should i discuss next i'm gonna do more of these q a and just one question and make it into kind of piece of content and uh, let's have a discussion really this is like because i and this is another thing guys i love when we have discussions in the comment section because believe it or not i learn from you guys every single day everyone who comments on the comment section i learned any new things huh how about that i never knew this like the yaml video uh someone i forgot his name maybe it's uh noah i think noah yeah thank you so much noah i was like i was doing this yaml thing with with microservices and, and docker compose and he says like and i and i really don't like yaml because i don't like anything that has to do with tabs right just, just, just make me do the curly braces and 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 yeah, it's to Jason. Jason, I can write it in a single line of code. The moment that Python is also that's what I don't like about Python. I just don't like these tab indented thing or space indented thing. Just to make it work because I can write it in a notepad, right? I have to have a special editor. But so YAML is the same thing. You have to have these space, stupid spaces in in the right place. So so he commented. Noah commented. I said, yeah. You can use JSON. Ha! Huh, how about that? I didn't know that. So these kind of small things, right? Or even a new technology. I talk about Apache Flink. I don't know what Flink is, right? So I had just a search about it. And then, yeah, you guys are keeping me just busy learning all these new things. So, yeah, it's uh, it makes you think that software engineering is actually just fascinating. Because, I mean, because... And, and this is a book I recently wrote. It's like about the empathy of software engineering and, 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 and the creative effort 
in the creative spectrum, really. Because the software engineering, there is no one single way to solve a problem. There's no one way to skin a cat. Sorry, Peter. Uh, you can actually come up with so many solutions to a given problem. And that yield a huge effort and, and, and a huge spectrum of solutions. And that yields a, a, an, an, an incredible amount of software out there, right? That slightly does the same thing with a very minor thing. Because everybody is creative, right? And that's why software engineering is a very creative effort. And that yields to the empathy in the process where you as a software engineer really need to be empathetic about the other software engineer. Uh, if you have an idea and, and someone else have an idea, we, and I say we, all software engineers, developers, we like to believe that we are right. So we push our solution. And in the process, we barely listen to the other person. And that's not good. And this is something I'm trying to change uh, in the coming. In this book that I wrote, it's called The Empathetic Engineer with the, the exclamation mark there. It's just, it's a free of charge. Go, go check it out. It's Amazon. It's 99 cents. That's the, I cannot make it free on Amazon. That's why it's 99 cents. But you can download it from my website. It's a PDF. It's a, it's a, it's a, this e mobby thing, whatever, right? It's just, it's a stories about how software engineers are really empathetic and, and how we should really become empathetic and, and think about the other person and the process. Because if you're listening to someone, assume that they know something you don't and assume not only just they don't know they know something you don't they know something you need to know and that's the critical part because if you need to know something then it is really really powerful right because you just you're gonna get out of that conversation a better human being because you just learned a new thing you didn't know but if you think that you know everything and you call yourself an expert in some field, then, well, there's no room for improvement in experts, I guess, right? You're an expert. You're perfect, right? That's why I don't like to use the word expert. I don't like to use, to, yeah, because I don't think anyone is expert. I think, yeah, you can be slightly better than other people, but... And, and certain knowledge, but there's always room for improvement. This thing is just going, guys. We always learn from each other, right? That's why I all share other engineers' work on YouTube, right? Well, there are a lot of great people that I learn every day from. And this, this, this field is just moving, guys. It's not going to stop. And software engineers are going to create content and content and content over and over and over again. So yeah, uh, I'm, apparently this video kind kind of it was a mixture of Q and A &Q &A and also a little bit of a chat. So let me know what you think. I know this time I'm ending the video. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys uh, stay awesome. Keep those questions coming; they're amazing.